watch you guys got another video here for you how old is too old for a computer well that depends on what you mean by too old a computer can be too old for many different reasons performance issues it's just not performing good enough compatibility issues that may be a big concern as well and also reliability issues we'll break it down into three things now thing to remember is windows 10 has already reached end of support on October 14th, 2025. That means millions of computers are not eligible to upgrade to Windows 11 for free because of the strict hardware requirements that Microsoft have in place. So what does that mean for you? A lot of people seem to think that their computer is still capable of running Windows 11 and it's still usable in 2025. And maybe some people are quite happy using that old computer in 2025 and they just simply don't want to buy a new computer. I've had emails from people showing me the specs of their old computer or what computer they're using and they want to keep using it in 2025 and it's just simply too old. And I think there comes a point when even Linux just will not rescue that old computer. And that's a hard thing to accept for some people because they just refuse to want to give up on their old computer because it still does everything they want it to do. And unfortunately, so if your computer's just not able to upgrade to Windows 11 officially because your system is just too old, uh, deemed by Microsoft, then obviously you've got a few options available. One of them is extending the Windows updates uh, for that system for one more year. Now, Microsoft have clearly stated that this is a one-year deal and they don't have plans on extending it any further than one year. So we'll just have to wait and see for that. Now, also, I did want to touch on a couple of options which people always talk about, which is Windows 10 LTSC and Windows 10 IoT LTSC versions. These are business-level versions of Windows, and you can see they have a support of up to January 12th, 2027 for Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC. Again, you will not be able to get a legit license key for these as a home user. You need to be a business to be able to get these. This one right here, Windows 10 IoT Enterprise LTSC 2021, is also supported right up to January 13th, 2032. And this is also impossible to get a license key in a legit way to be able to activate it. The other option is to use Linux Mint or any other Linux distro for your old hardware. This will give life to your old hardware and allow you to use your computer and still receive security updates for that old PC that you're running. And the reason why I'm going through this one more time here is because I've had quite a few emails from people asking me how they can install Windows 11 on their old computer, and it's just not compatible. So Zero Patch is another option which you can use to extend uh, security updates to Windows 10. Now, this is not an official way of extending updates. What I'd advise you to do is use the one year offered by Microsoft and continue to use Zero Patch if you have to have that old computer running for some piece of proprietary software or whatever reason it is that you want to use it for and you just can't use Linux. Now, if we look at the stack counter, you're going to see that Windows 10 is on a steady decline. And this is because uh, Windows 11 is the next operating system that you're going to have to use. Now, unfortunately for a lot of people that have old hardware, it's just literally not going to be compatible with Windows 11 in an official capacity, i.e. if you're using this on unsupported hardware. Microsoft have said that they can pull the plug on any of that at any time and you will stop receiving security updates. So it's probably not advisable to upgrade to uh, Windows 11 if your PC doesn't support it, even though many people are probably doing it, as in some people are using Windows 10 LTSC versions when they shouldn't be. So let's take a look at old hardware. Now, I got an email from a gentleman saying that he has this computer right here and he's trying to install Windows 11 on it and he wants to get it up and running. Now, unfortunately, some computers are just not compatible with Windows 11 
due to the pop count on the CPU and it will be blocked. No matter what methods you try, it will be blocked and you will not be able to install it. Now, if you look at the computer that this gentleman is talking about, it's just really old. Now, I can understand it might be for a business use or it might be for whatever reasons you're using it for, but it's old. And there comes a point when that hardware is just obsolete and it's just not worth using anymore. Now, I can understand it probably does everything you need it to do in a business or even at home. There's been many a video on YouTube that have promoted this old surplus office PCs and turning them into gaming systems. And now tons of people are left with these old systems, which are now obsolete and you can't do anything with. Even if you did manage to turn any of these old systems into a gaming system, it's going to be laggy. A lot of these old systems are proprietary parts and they have weird shaped motherboards. Uh, they have other things that you have to leave plugged into the motherboard. I've seen people ripping all of the components out of these and putting them into cases and selling them as gaming systems. And the list goes on. So the motherboard for that particular brand of PC is the Dell Precision T3400. It's an LGA 77.5 socket with DDR2 RAM. Maximum capacity for this RAM is 16 gigabytes. That's four slots you have to fill up to get to 16 gigabytes. And the speed is 800 megahertz or 667 megahertz speed. And that is it. That is what you're looking at right there. It has no NVMe slot on the board. And yes, you might be able to use a riser card to be able to use an NVMe or even use a, a SATA SSD on there to be able to put the operating system on to make it a little bit faster. But you can see it's just a, a weird shaped board. It's got proprietary parts on it. And really, it's had its day. It's probably just too old to salvage. And you might get people in the comments section disagreeing and wanting to use these uh, continue to use these in 2025. You may be thinking about changing the CPU, and there is quite a lot of CPUs on that 775 socket. Unfortunately, a lot of these CPUs might not work with that particular brand of computer. And the reason why is because of the biases. They were locked by Dell or HP or Lenovo or wherever it is that you've bought a PC off of. And sometimes it won't allow you to put in a modern CPU into there. Now you can upgrade the CPUs on these, but they are limited to what type of CPU you can put in there. Now, some of the CPUs that you might be trying to put in there don't support SSE 4.2, which means you're not going to be able to put Windows 11 on it anyway, and you're just buying a doorstop. It's that simple. So check the specs of your PC to make sure it is compatible with upgrading the CPU and what CPU you can put in there and whether it is going to be able to upgrade to Windows 11 if you can upgrade to Windows 11. On these old systems, it's more than likely that it's not going to be eligible for Windows 11 officially, but unofficially, you might still be able to do it, but it's not advisable for the long term. So your options are very limited with these old systems. Any $200 mini PC will outperform that aging workstation that you have there. And here is a list of the Dell Precision Workstation T3400 of CPUs that will fit into that socket and probably work. There's a list of them right here. And if you're using something that is older than these, you can pick these up for absolute peanuts on uh, eBay. So just have a little look around or even order one from AliExpress. If you need to keep that old beta going, then by all means do so. If you're using mechanical drives, then swap those out for SATA SSDs or even get a riser card for an NVMe drive in there to give it a bit more performance. Add as much memory in that system as you can. And again, you can put on Linux on there if you have to, or even put Windows 10 on there and use zero patch after the extended support has ended. I wouldn't advise you using LTSE versions because they are not legit and you're going down the piracy route, which is never advisable. And again, there's plenty of people that are going to advise you to go to shady websites and do them sort of things, but it's not advisable for the long term. You will run into software issues later on down the line because the IoT LTSE versions were never really designed to run uh, desktop software. 
So if your PC is taking forever to boot up and it's taking forever to do certain tasks or you're getting any error codes like freezing or any sort of crashing, or maybe just the operating system is not eligible for upgrading officially, then by all means your PC is probably getting too old. If you've got failing hard drive errors or you've got other issues that you've got coming up on the system, maybe it's time to ditch that old computer and think about purchasing something a bit more modern. If you look at the computer's uh, CPUs right here, you can see the specifications for one of these CPUs right here. And I can tell you right now, it doesn't support SSE 4.2, which means you're not going to be able to upgrade that to Windows 11. It's got four cores, four threads, TDP is 95 watts. And again, it's really old. And remember, a life, life expectancy for a computer is probably seven to eight years at a push. And the computer you're talking about here does not support SSE 4.2. As you can see right in that list right there, it tells you the features. So do your research, make sure uh, that your system is eligible for it. If it's not, then you're not going to be able to uh, put Windows 11 on it anyway because of the pop count and it will block it. Now, I know people just don't like being told their computer is too old and to buy a new one. But if it's that old, as old as these, then it is time to buy a new computer, in my honest opinion. And if you must buy a used computer, then obviously you want to make sure you're buying an Intel 8th generation or higher, or you want to make sure it's a Ryzen uh, 2000 series or higher. Otherwise, you're going to run into it's not compatible for Windows 11 again. Another thing to watch out for is DDR2 is pretty much done for. Uh, even Linux won't be able to rescue that sort of uh, memory. DDR3, I think, has sort of come to an end or is coming to an end, really. Try and aim for DDR4 or DDR5. If you can, that's obviously going to be a bit more expensive. And if you're buying some of these computers off of eBay, they are designed for quick flips to make maximum profit. Some of them have cheap Chinese motherboards in them with older CPUs. Some of them have... Uh, cannibalized from Dell Optiplexes and HPs. They take them out of the case and put them into a, another case like these ones here, as you can see on the bottom of the screen. And again, some of these have uh, lower cheap end motherboards, cheap power supplies, and it's all geared for maximum profit. So bear that in mind as well. Anyway, I think that is going to be about it. Hopefully this answers all your questions. And I know a lot of people email and I don't respond, and that's because I don't want to be doing technical support uh, and spending a lot of my time with older hardware like this, which can be answered very quickly in our Discord server. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Big shout out to my YouTube members. I do appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the next video. Thanks again for watching, and thanks for all your support. Bye for now.